Hello everyone, my name is Russ Sorrells. I work with CapEx Sales. We are here in South Carolina as well as we have representation in North Carolina. We are manufacturers representatives that specialize in leak test equipment as well as automated assembly equipment. This conversation is going to focus on pressure decay leak testing. Specifically the different aspects and considerations with regards to pressure decay leak testing, what can affect it, what do you want to make sure that you are doing to uh, ex ensure that you have a stable test, a repeatable test, and an accurate test. That's what you're shooting for if you're going to test your parts, right? You don't want to ship bad parts down the line or even worse to your customer. So with pressure decay leak testing, first let's talk about the definition. Pressure decay is measuring pressure loss over time. So we're pressurizing a volume or your test part and we're measuring the pressure loss over time. What that means is theoretically you could isolate the, the test circuit. So you could disconnect the air pressure that is going into the instrumentation and the test would still run because you've got a closed circuit where we are measuring the pressure loss in the closed circuit. So that is the definition of pressure decay. It has tons of applications. Uh, we use it a lot for testing aluminum castings as an example where you want to maintain oil. So you don't want oil to leak out, so you leak test it with pressure decay. Uh, we test it using with gear pumps, hydraulic gear pumps, uh, you name it. I mean, it's just, the list goes on and on and on. IV bags all kinds of medical components, everything everything gets leak tested. It's amazing what gets leak tested. So today we're going to talk about, again, the challenges that you want to look out for and things you might need to uh, consider when addressing problems or issues with your leak test equipment. So pressure decay, the part stability will affect your application. So that's number one. So the stability of your part under test. That is something to be considerate of. And what that means is if your part is plastic and you pressurize a plastic part, let's say it's a windshield washer bottle, it's going to it's going to blow up like a balloon. And when we're using pressure decay or actually really any leak test technology, the environment inside the part is extremely critical because that's what we're measuring, right? So anything that affects the stability of the pressure inside the part is going to affect the repeatability of the leak test technology. So if the part is blowing up like a balloon, it's going to try to get back to that state that it was prior to being pressurized. So the plastic is is applying force to the air pressure internally and it will continue to resonate and as it goes back and forth you're going to get pressure changes and eventually it will settle in and that resonance will stop but in the meantime if you're trying to do it fast then that is going to be an issue for your repeatability so the material that the part is made up of has a big impact on the repeatability of your leak test application let's look at number two the actual test pressure has a significant impact on the application. Uh, specifically, let's, let's say you're, you're going to test at 150 psi. That's a pretty high pressure. It takes a lot of energy, mechanical energy, to create 150 psi. So you've got you've got already a lot of energy, and you're taking that part that doesn't have any pressure in it, and you are opening up air pressure at 150 psi, actually higher than that, right, because you you need to achieve 150 psi, so the source is going to be at a higher pressure. So lots of energy that you're releasing into the part. And then you're going to isolate it. So you've taken all that energy, you've BAM! You've hit it into the part, it's going to be doing this, there's a lot going on, those molecules internally are rubbing up against each other, we can't see it, but all that's going on. There's a lot of physics involved with leak testing. So the part, um, is the part is pressurized at 150 psi much different energy than a part pressurized at 10 psi so we have to take into consideration the test pressure when 
we're going to calculate a strat or consider a strategy for pressure decay leak testing. Next is the test environment. This is critical, especially if you live up north and you are in Michigan, for an example, which is where I started my career. It is uh, cold up there sometimes, you may know. And if you have your machine next to a dock door and the door is opening, closing, opening, closing, uh, you're going to have cold air come in. That cold air is going to do what as it, as it hits the part? The cold air is going to cool down the part and therefore the part pressure internally is going to change as a result of the part changing temperature. So the environment, the test environment is extremely important. If you have a fan, if the operator needs a fan blowing on them, that fan is going to blow the air onto the part that you're testing and depending on the leak rate is definitely going to have an impact on the repeatability instability of your test application. So the environment in which you are performing a pressure decay test is extremely important, especially for those low leak rate applications. Now when I say low leak rate, I'm talking things uh, 10 SCCM, 5 SCCM, 3 SCCM, 1 SCCM. So those are, those are getting down there into the lower and, and tighter leak specifications. And if you have cycle time requirements that surround those low uh, reject criteria, then you could have a real challenge for the repeatability of the application. Because really, we're trying to hit a, hit a high gauge r and right, or a low gauge r and we want, we want ideally less than 20%. Uh, it's even better if it's less than 10%. So in between 10 and 20% is typically where we land with uh, pressure decay technology or just leak testing technology in general because of all the moving components. So it's not a static gauge measurement like you would traditionally have for, say, measuring a machine part. Okay, the next aspect. Part volume. If you're leak testing a large part, that's going to be very different than leak testing a small part, especially with regards to cycle time and the repeatability of the application. So those are some things to keep in mind when you are trying to leak test a, a very large part. You've got to, you've got to think about, okay, what is the impact is what's the material uh, so I pressurize this large part is there going to be a lot of movement of the part that's going to cause pressure change inside the part and pressure change inside the part causes repeatability issues so that is something to consider for your application is uh, do you need some way to stabilize it sometimes as an example when we're testing IV bags we will drop an IV bag in between two plates. So we drop it in, pressurize it, the part is restricted as far as the expansion of the IV bag and that helps to improve the repeatability of the part that otherwise is very unstable for pressure decay leak testing. So part volume, it matters. Next, the available cycle time. If you need to leak test a part in 10 seconds, but it takes 10 seconds to pressurize the part because of the part volume, then that isn't going to work. You're going to need multiple tests in order to produce the throughput that you are looking for. So the available cycle time is extremely critical when choosing the right test technology and then when you are purchasing equipment that's going to be, going to be used to do the leak testing. So very important that you think about the uh, available cycle time when you are talking with suppliers about the equipment and um, know that so that you can address it ahead of time as opposed <laughs> to, to buying the equipment which I have many customers that, that, that happens to. They've got 30 seconds but the actual test takes 60 seconds and so they buy one tester then realize that they need a second tester almost another another one and a half testers in order to meet the proper throughput. So very important that you have testing done ahead of time. We've got a lab at Cincinnati or in Cincinnati where we can do the leak testing uh, for you. So we can go ahead, determine the cycle time and determine what the expected gauge r and will be for the application ahead of you even having to purchase equipment. So we're happy to do that for you. And last but not least, the test fixture. 
Now, this is where most companies go wrong because they don't do this every day. If you don't do leak testing every day, then it is very difficult to know all of the nuances that go into leak testing. There's a reason that companies specialize in building leak test equipment. So Cincinnati Test Systems, as an example, they build 400 different machines every year. So they have a good handle on what it takes to seal parts, and they have seen just about everything with regards to issues that come up with sealing and different application challenges. So the test fixturing is extremely important. It's important for the repeatability of the application that we've got a test tech or we've got a, a sealing strategy for example where the seals as they come in there is a limiter so there's a stop to prevent the seals from continuing to move on the part because if they are moving on the part what's that going to do that's going to change the volume of the part what's going to happen if you change the volume of the part if you've pressurized it then you're going to affect the pressure inside the part. All we're doing with pressure decay technology, mass flow technology, essentially we are measuring pressure changes inside the part. And so anything that affects the pressure inside the part is going to affect your test and its repeatability. So we oftentimes, especially here in the environmental portion, we talk about adiabatic temperature effects. So if you get a part that's out of the washer, and you take it and it's hot, it's warm because it just came through the dryer and the washer, and then you put it on a leak tester, it is not gonna be repeatable. You're gonna have tons of issues with regards to testing that part because the part is not stable prior to putting it on the tester. So the air pressure that you're putting in the part is gonna be a different temperature than the part. The part, is, the part is warmer than the environment, that's gonna create a problem within itself. So these are all things that you need to consider when thinking about implementing a pressure decay technology. We would love to help you out. CapexSales.com if you want more information. Feel free to hit our blog. Uh, CapexSales.com forward slash blog. we got a lot of different technical advice as well as personal development information on there. My name is Russ Sorrells, again with Capex Sales. Thank you for your business. Any questions at all, just comment below or let us know. We'll talk soon.